Get off the sidelines and take control of your financial future at www.tackletrading.com. Get in the game. We want to talk about journals today. And, you know, we were on a conference call today with Matt uh, and Noah and Gino and myself. And, you know, the coaches, we get together and we talk about what's the best thing we can do for all of you guys. You know, we really think through and we plan out all these events. And one of the things Matt said that struck me, he said, I've had a few questions lately that people don't know how to use the journal. You know, they don't know how to use the tackle trading journals. Now, we have many different tackle trading journals. I said, well, why don't we take them one at a time and let's feature them in the webinars in the future. Now, by the way, do you guys, and I'm going to put this in here, Gino, here's a link to the post. Now, this is the portfolio journal, which is great, and I do want to look at this one at some point, but I want you to find the tackle trade journal, the individual trade journal, if you can, and Gino, find that link in the post. Hang on a second. I got to pull it up. Yeah, no problem. Now, there are three journals that we primarily use, and I want you guys to write these ones down. One is called Tackle Trading Trade Journal. Tackle Trading Trade Journal, which is one. The second one is called a Tackle Portfolio Journal which is what Gino has here. And the third one is called a Tackle Theta Research. Now you should have copies of all three. And it's very possible because they were updated about one year ago uh, with some new kind of design and whatnot. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy, but just good, efficient, clean journals. That if you have an old version from years ago, there may be a more uh, current version that you can check out. Now, by the way, they're all available uh, on Tackle Trading. And if anybody cannot find the link via search, feel free to shoot team at Tackle Trading an email or put it in the clubhouse. Now, Gino, in this post right here called Tackle Trading Trade Journal, uh, I put this out there maybe just a few months ago and I did a little video on how to do it. Uh, if you go all the way down, 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 you'll find a download the Excel button, okay? Tackle Theta Journal is the newer version of what Cashflow V2 was, Hector. Okay. All right. Now, this is still the Tackle Portfolio. Find all of your... Okay, very good. Here's where it is. All right. Very good. Now... Here's my thing. We're going to do five minutes of rapid fire at the end, and we're going to do probably 16 minutes of going through every detail of this journal. And uh, let, let me kind of set the stage a little bit here and make sure that we understand exactly why we have to journal. You want this one right here, Tim? So Guys, this and all this stuff? no, you can close that one. We're not, we're not going to use Tackle Theta today. We'll use it in the next Coach's Show with Matt. We're going to focus just on Tackle Trading Journal, the individual trade journal. Okay. Very good. Because to me, Gino, and you guys out there, students and, and team members, I'd rather make sure we have a thorough conversation about one than trying to gloss over three. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, I is think so. Basic yeah. right here? Is this good? This one's it. Tackle Trading Trade Journal. And that link I put in there earlier, I'll put it in the chat again at the end. But let's start with a few things. Number one, journal is not an option. Uh, you have to journal, okay? And uh, I just want you to make a commitment to yourself. Write it in your notes. I will journal my trades, okay? I will journal my trades. Because if you don't journal your trades, it will make it harder for your mentors and your coaches to help you. It'll make it harder for you to understand the context of what's going on. Now, there's one of two things that you can do. You can either do it every day, which is what I believe most students should do, or you could do it once a week and go back into your accounts and kind of just review the records and put them all in there once a week. Uh, Gino, what, what advice do you give new students when you're mentoring them? Definitely, you know, as we're filling out our trades on paper, I have what's called a daily tracking sheet. Now you put your entry price, your exit price, 
that's the best time to shoot it over to here. You know, um, you know, put your you now. You know, when it gets into options, it gets a little more difficult. That's why we have these. But you're trying to track not only your position sizing, but your win and loss ratio, and you're trying to make notes on what you learned from it. Because Tim, if you don't, if you just journal your trades, I have so many students who go, "Yeah, here's my journal," and I'm like, "And what'd you get out of it?" Uh, I'm making money or I'm losing money. Yeah, but but why? <laughs> why? <laughs> you know. And some people like the the engineers, very detailed. Oh my God, they'll they'll this 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 isn't enough for them, Tim. They got to have three pages on a you know bull call spread, and all the different ones they compared to it, and all these other things. And they will say, go well, you know what? I messed up here, and that's what it's about. It's it's your losing trades. What went wrong? Why? So when you're beginning, what are you doing wrong? What's the mistakes? Um, a lot of it's mental, and you just need to see it at black and white, and you go. Why did I do that? Why did I let that loss get out of hand? What was I thinking? What was my reason for getting in the trade? And you start to learn who you are. And that's what it's about, Tim. Trading is about learning out who you are and your personality and figuring out what kind of trader you are. After a lot mm -hmm. of trades, you'll start to see what kind of trader you are, what you're better at. Like, Tim, you might like swing trading and I might like swing trading, but we might be better at spread trading or something, you know? And, mm -hmm. and and that's funny because people go, God, you know, when you scalp the Forex, you know, you got a lot of winning trades. You do pretty good. And yeah, I should probably spend more time scalping Forex, but it's not what I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a pretty decent swing trader, but that's what I like to do. But it's, it's nice to know that, wow, just because of my journaling, dang, I, I'm actually, a, I could go head to head with some of these big, big Forex guys. So it's kind of nice knowing that sure. from your journal, knowing your numbers, you know. But one thing, Tim, I don't do, and you probably are a fan of this, I definitely don't journal my golf score, okay? There, there's <laughs> no figuring that out. There's no reason. Well, maybe you should. I think the same principle applies. The only way you're going to get better if you start keeping score and keeping record I guess if the the entire goal is to go out and pound uh, you know a six pack of beer, there's not a problem with not journaling it. But if you ever do want to get better at golf, you might need to keep record <laughs> of how well you do and don't do. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. I, I know where you're going with that. Uh, <clears throat> I've had a hard time always keeping score at golf either, but uh, I find very good value in something you want to get good at. You got to keep score, and trading is something everybody here obviously wants to get good at. So let's go sell by sell and kind of talk about what we're looking for. <laughs> bullish. Number one, Gino has a bullish call. Score. That's pretty funny. That's good news. Uh, Bonnie uh, says, I, I'm at long trade 93 in my first practice journal. I didn't see that. Maggie, thank you very much for grabbing that. Uh, when should I get an expert to look at it? You should be talking to coaches and working with somebody to, to give you feedback on that as soon as you can there. What I would tell you, Bonnie, is I would probably, if you don't have a one-on-one -on -one coach, I would use Clubhouse Community or these coaches' uh, lounges as well, or maybe your mentor. Uh, and, by the way, you do know me. I'd be happy to take a look at it. So shoot me a, an email, and I, I'll take a peek at it and give you some feedback. You know, Gino, when I talk to a beginner, and any one of my students who have ever had this conversation with knows this, Jing and Franco and, you know, Beth and, uh, you know, uh, Hector, who I've talked to just in the last few weeks. Uh, whenever I hear from somebody, the first thing I request is a journal because I don't, tr you know, I, I don't want to listen to somebody talk about what they think is happening until I actually have proof on what is happening, you know, because as a mentor and as a trader who's done this for a very long time, the data gives me context. Now, there's a couple of things I would recommend. Number one, your starting account value. You should keep a journal for all accounts. So I want you to write that down. Have a different journal for all accounts. Now, some traders will just duplicate the tabs here. If you're good at Excel, you probably have some shortcuts to do in that. But I think it's important to separate, like if you have an account with a margin account, put the account value on one tab, save it. You know, if you have a, an account with an IRA, put the account value on another tab, save it. Now, many of these, these data points up at the top are going to be calculated for you. Like largest winning trade, largest losing trade, 
total net profit, gross profit, gross losses, those are formulas that tie into the data from the journals that you create. Uh, average days in a trade, profit loss ratio, uh, total number of trades, winning trades, losing trades, so on and so forth. That data will paint a picture. Now, Gino, I got a question for you. How many trades of a specific strategy do you need to have to be able to draw any kind of real conclusions. I mean, if you make one trade, that's a not, uh, not enough. If you have a thousand, probably plenty. Uh, there's got to be a, a number in the middle. How many data points do we need before we can start to draw conclusions? Well, Tim, you know, first off, uh, the first 10 trades is a bunch of mistakes and everything. Just checking out your contingent orders, your stop losses. You know, you're just seeing if things work. You're just checking the brakes and seeing how the wheel turns and everything. When you get your first 50 trades, guys, that's when you got to start dialing in. I tell students, hey, every 20, 25 trades, look at your numbers. Look at your numbers. Also, don't focus in on your daily. You know, you go, what did I do this week? What did I do this month? How did I do this quarter? And you should be seeing yourself getting a little bit better as time goes. But it's nice to look back at all your trades and you can really see, wow, I've done quite a bit. And believe me, when you get, who here has, has, is like over 100 trades? Anybody over 100 trades? Awesome. So tell me, those people that are over 100 trades, if you look back at your first 20, does it kind of remind you like, wow, what was I thinking? You know? Or, whoa, that, a good thing. I, yeah, they were, <laughs> they were a mess, shaky. And after you got through your first 50, did you notice how fast and easier it was on your daily routine, your order entry. Yeah, you start realizing how fast you are. How good do you think will be once you have a thousand journaled? I guarantee you, every hundred you journal, if you're not learning and getting better from them, you definitely need a professional to step in and go, hey, listen, let me look at some of your biggest losers. Let me look at what you're doing here, what kind of strategies. Tim, you and I, we've been seeing hundreds of journals and, and we can read people's trading so much better than they can because we've been there. And uh, like, I'll tell you, one of the biggest things I see when I see people's journals is this, <clears throat> especially the last few months, is this. Nobody takes profit fast enough. People, most of people, they go, well, I don't know why I'm not doing better. You're, you're not taking profit. I mean, the market's hitting new highs every month like crazy for the last three or four months, right? It's like, why are you not taking profit? How, how, are you, how are you getting stopped out? And you'll start to realize that. You're like, wait a minute. I look at, like Tim, I saw a journal uh, a few weeks ago. There's a lot of red in it. And I said, wait, look at these trades. Yeah. I could have swore these stocks were doing good. And these were bullish trades. And they were doing good, but they stayed in them. And they didn't move their stop up. And I said, well, they were doing good. What if you moved your stop up just to protect, protect your break even? What if you did this? Oh, they actually were profitable. And they go, yeah, but they weren't profitable very much. But I'll tell you, a small profit, when you add up all those trades, blows away a lot of losses. They really do. And this has been a base hit market. Mm -hmm. It really has been. It's not, not like, you know, the only thing hitting home runs is the Bitcoin type stuff, you know and oil but sure it really is it's like wow um i love this market tim because you can analyze somebody's portfolio so easy you're like okay are you profitable great now if you're not profitable what's wrong and if your mutual fund is underperforming or it's it's negative something's wrong <laughs> you know but yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it's really cool to have a professional look at your journal and kind of uh go into it and really, guys, the most – I, I kind of jumped the gun and showed you my portfolio journal. Once you get 100 trades in there, you really get down to the nitty-gritty and you find out what's your best – trade. Like, like your brother, I was talking to your brother, Mark. He has a watch list. He's already narrowed it down to the stocks that he trades best. He doesn't have to scan. You know, He found out by doing thousands of trades which stocks he's good at reading. And it took some uh, journaling to do that. Right. 